What's going on guys, John Elder here from Kodobi.com and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do image animation on Hover with Kenter and Python. All right guys, in this video, we're gonna do image animation on Hover. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we are going to learn how to hover over images and change them. When you hover, it changes. When you leave, it changes back, right? There we go. And uh, pretty simple, we're gonna use some bindings and some of the things we've learned in the sort of last few videos to do this, and it's actually really simple. So I can close this. So I've created a file called hover.py, and it's just our basic starter code, importing Kenter, we've got a, a basic window, and we've got our main loop. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. So you notice I've, we're gonna use images, but I've commented out the pill thing. We actually don't need that, but it's there in case we do. If you get errors, you could always uncomment this line and it should work. So, all right, so first of all, let's create an image. And we usually do that by creating a label. So let's go my underscore label, and that's gonna be a label. And we want it in root, and we want the image to equal something. So let's define the image. So let's call this uh, my pick, I don't know, and set that equal to a photo image. And we want this to be the file. What file? Well, if you've been watching these videos for a while, you know I have a directory in our a GUI directory called images, and I keep some files in there from time to time. And I have one called aspen.png that we've looked at before. So this is a, a relative path. You could go uh, sort of like this if you wanted to be very specific where it is, but we could just go like this because we're already in the GUI directory where we're saving this file. So. Okay, there's this image. Now we can just copy this into here and that'll work. Now let's go my underscore label dot pack and just pack this onto the screen. Let's give it a pad Y of 20 just to push it down a little bit. So let's go ahead and save this as hover.py and head over to our git bash terminal. You can see I'm in our C GUI directory and let's just run that file. So Python hover.py and when we do, we see here's the image and that's cool. So we already know how to put images on the screen. We've done this lots of times in the past, but uh, just a quick refresher on how to do that. So, all right, that's fine. Now, how do we change it on Hover? Well, we've been doing bindings lately. And to do that, remember, we just go on my underscore label dot bind, and then we pass in what we want to bind. Well, the thing to hover over anything in Kinter is enter. So you're entering the area of the thing. So in this case, we've got a picture or technically a label. As you enter the mouse into the label, that's what that stands for. It does not mean hit the enter key on your keyboard. That's kind of confusing, right? Uh, so what do we want to do? Whenever that happens, we want to run a function. So what do we want to call this function? Uh, let's just call this change. We're going to change the picture. And that's all there is to it. So now we can define this function and we can do anything we want in there. So first thing we have to pass E or event, right? I just do E for short. You can name it anything you want, but we're passing an event. Anytime you have a binding, it creates an event, a keyboard event, a mouse event, some sort of event happens. And the event here is we're entering the mouse into the area. So we, we're actually not gonna use this in the function, but the function, whenever you pass a binding to a function, it expects an argument here. So we'll just put it there just so we don't throw an error. So now we just need to change this pick in the way we normally would. It's slightly different, but uh, not a whole lot. So let's go my underscore pick, and let's, actually I'm just gonna copy this whole thing here. And I have another image called Aspen2 in that same directory, so I'll just define that. And then we can just call my underscore label dot config and set the image equal to my underscore pick. Now, you would think this would be enough, and normally it is, but for some reason we have to take one more step here, and we have to explicitly define this. So let's go my underscore label dot image, and then set that equal to my underscore pick, which is this guy right here, right? So it's just, we're doing the same thing here, but we have to do it twice 
And I'm not sure if that's because of the garbage collector that works inside of functions with Kinter or what, but if you leave either one of these off, it won't work. So let's go ahead and save this and run this guy again. And let me make sure not to hover over it as I drag it. And now we can come down here and boom, when we, our mouse comes in here, it changes. Now notice if I leave the area, it doesn't change back. That's actually a separate binding that we have to do. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So let's see. All right, so down here, we can go my underscore label dot bind. And the binding we want now is leave. We're leaving the area. We've entered the area and now we're leaving. And so let's call this change underscore back or whatever. And now we can come up here and define this function. Again, we need to pass in that event, that E, and I'm just gonna copy all of this, paste it in, and let's just change all this back. Aspen two becomes Aspen, just Aspen. And let's see, the rest of these things can stay the same. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. And let's run this guy. And again, let me be careful not to hover my mouse over. Okay, now we can come in and we leave, in, out, in, out. Come in from this side, doesn't really matter. In, out, in, out, this way. Anytime you enter the area, it will change. When you leave the area, it will disappear. So that's cool, right? This is neat, but so what? Like maybe you wanna create a flashcard thing or a, a game where you're flipping over tiles or something, but you might wanna do this with something you can actually click on afterwards. And we can do a binding for a click if we wanted to, or you could just, instead of using a label here, we could use a button. So let's do that real quick. So we could just come down here and instead of label, right, we could just change this to button, right? And the rest of these things all stay the same, yeah. Yeah, so that should work. So let's go ahead and save this and run it again. And you'll notice subtly there's a, an outline around this because now this is a button. And same thing, if we hover over it, the button changes. If we click on it, you can see clearly it's, it's doing something. Now, obviously, we haven't actually done anything with this button. We don't have a command or anything to call. But you would do that like you do any other button, right? Just when you define it. Let's see, right here, you just give it a command equals, you know, do something. And then just, you know, create that define do something thing. And we could say uh, label two equals a label. And it's in root and the text is uh, you clicked the button. Right. And we can go label to dot back. Back this on the screen, save it, run it. Boom, click it. There it is down there. It's being covered up actually. Make this bigger, there we go. You click the button. <laughs> every time I click it, does it, or whatever, right? You get the idea. That picture just cracks me up every time. <laughs> All right, so it is Friday here in Vegas. I'm very excited for the weekend. Don't think I actually have any, oh, I do have plans. I got a party to go to Saturday night. I know social distancing and all that, but uh, I think the casinos are set to open up maybe this weekend or next week here in Vegas, which is kind of exciting. Uh, you know, I don't know how that's gonna go with the uh, pandemic and everything, but I guess they'll social distance inside the casinos. I don't know how that works, but anyway, it uh, should be interesting to watch. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 40 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Alder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.